Today we learned that BlackRock, an investment manager of over $6 trillion in stock and bond funds, six times the size it was before the 2008 global financial crisis, effectively published a working blueprint for the current bailout regimes ongoing within the USA and via other nations in the Western world. This plan was published and communicated in August 2019 at the G7 Summit of Central Bankers in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, only a few weeks before September 17, 2019, when the New York Fed repo loan ramp began in effect. The still ongoing overnight lending program, driven by the private Federal Reserve, has now made over $13.3 trillion in short-term loans by going direct to the 24 primary dealer trading houses on Wall Street. In the report from August 2019, BlackRock suggested in the next downturn, as in perhaps the depression going on right now, that blurring the lines between government fiscal policy and central bank monetary policy, precisely what the current U.S. Treasury and private Federal Reserve are doing today in the United States, is what will be required for medium and long-term goals. We covered beginning thoughts about this unauditable melding between the U.S. Treasury and Fed in our March 27, 2020 video entitled, Another Financial Coup by Crisis Arrives, 2020 Bailout. This report basically auditioned BlackRock for its current role in these unprecedented bailouts. BlackRock has of course been hired by the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Canada, and Sweden's Central Bank to implement key features of their plan. Three of the authors previously worked as central bankers in the U.S., Canada, and Switzerland, respectively. The report calls for the coordinated pinning of interest rates. It also calls for higher inflation rates ahead to make up for past quote-unquote misses and to raise the inflation expectations in the future. As well, it, it also recalled on the melding of the U.S. Treasury and Federal Reserve so guys like Steve Mnuchin and Jerome Powell can pick and choose winners and our ignored losers along the great bailout we are witnessing today. Like during the 2008 global financial crisis, today too BlackRock has again been selected in more no-bid contracts by the Federal Reserve, this time to be the sole buyer of corporate bonds and corporate bond ETFs for the Fed's unprecedented $750 billion corporate bond buying program, which will include both investment grade and junk rated bonds something which is illegal for the Federal Reserve to do, but given the melding with the U.S. Treasury, they'll just sidestep those laws effectively. No one is stopping them. Oh, and get this. BlackRock is also being allowed by the Fed to buy its own corporate bond ETFs as part of the bailout program to prop up the almost junk-grade corporate bond market. Here are some of those purchases to date. You can see many of BlackRock's iShares corporate bond ETF quote-unquote investment vehicles have been purchased by Federal Reserve bailouts, uh, I'm sorry, U.S. Treasury bailouts, some of the beginning salvo of the unprecedented $750 billion corporate bond buying program, which we just mentioned. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SDBullion.com. We will end this video covering some recent irregularities and record size events in the global gold market. But first, let's hear from bond trading billionaire and 2020 silver bullion bull, Scott Menard, about the growing perverse incentives for much of the bailed out corporate sector to do anything else but lever up on debt further to come. One of your biggest concerns was excessive leverage in the system. What are the ramifications of that? Well, you know, Sonali, we already were at record levels of uh, debt uh, on a number of measures uh, from corporations when we got into uh, January of this year. And uh, you know, one of my concerns was that when we have an economic downturn, this this highly levered economy of ours was going to uh, lead to more severe pressures on the economy than we would normally have. But now, you know, the Federal Reserve has basically uh, eliminated the the downside in corporate debt. Uh, it, they've sent the world a, a buy signal, and uh, asked. Uh, we're now putting on record amounts of corporate debt. Uh, the leverage situation is even getting more exacerbated. So uh, I think ultimately um, the Fed is going to find itself uh, in a position where when it tries to phase out these programs uh, of support for corporate debt, it will be a lot like what happened back in 2013 when uh, Ben Bernanke first talked about ending quantitative easing, uh, there was a tantrum. 
And so it's quite likely that uh, that the Fed will face that day of reckoning when it tries to uh, slow down asset purchases of corporate debt. And uh, the market will then challenge the Fed to find out where the put is. And uh, I think this is now a permanent feature of the market. You know, the, the corporate America is going to become addicted to the Fed providing support. Uh, what I think it means, um, Sonali, is that uh, corporations will uh, take greater risk, uh, that, that if you don't have a highly levered balance sheet relative to your competitors, uh, your equity returns will be punished during business expansions. And so uh, pressures will be on CEOs to, to continue to increase the amount of leverage, especially uh, when the Fed has got a policy of maintaining low rates for an extended period of time. So um, <clears throat> I think that ultimately, uh, is there a day of reckoning? Um, I, I think that uh, the Federal Reserve will will be you know faced with the challenge of whether they allow a day of reckoning uh, or uh, whether they basically decide that they just have to continue to provide liquidity to the system until inflation rates pick up to levels that probably would be viewed as unacceptable by most participants of the Fed today. When, at what point did debt levels matter for the U.S.? Well, I mean, Sonali, I think the question is, you know, how far can we push this? Um, you know, I, I was quoted, I quoted this morning, I, I like to say that, you know, uh, the American people uh, need to have more confidence in the willingness and ability of, of its government to print money. Uh, the dirty little secret of central banking is that ultimately the, the role of the central bank uh, is to finance the government. And so uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this open-ended financing from the Federal Reserve, uh, I think, will continue uh, and, uh, and is going to give a lot of uh, flexibility uh, to Congress to uh, pass additional support programs. Uh, obviously, some of them may be uh, very constructive and positive. But, uh, you know, some of them might actually turn out to be highly disruptive uh, to the, the capitalist system. Scott Menard, like many other financial onlookers, are waiting for the bankruptcy phase for this viral crisis to begin ramping up. With now over 42.6 million U.S. citizens having lost their jobs in the last 11 weeks, it's very likely we will see tens of thousands of businesses, both public and private, close and or file Chapter 11 bankruptcy through the end of this year and into next. How high do you think this red line will go? Turning to the gold market, interesting news out of China regarding its physical gold market of late. Peter Hobson of Reuters reports China reduces paperwork for gold exporters. China's central bank and customs authority said on Tuesday they would simplify procedures for companies exporting gold following a slump in domestic demand for the metal. Now, judging by the latest export data and import data, it looks like Chinese gold market players are likely leveraged with bills of credit uh, that they have to pay in fiat currencies that are coming due. And thus, the world's largest gold market is now exporting more gold than it has for many years. The Reuters story goes on to state, In April, China's exports of gold via Hong Kong exceeded its gold imports via the territory for the first time since at least 2011. And Switzerland, which usually sends tens of tons of gold to China every month, shipped no metal to the country at all. In our market update video last week, we showed you this 2008 through March 2020 U.S. gold import chart. These likely fresh gold bullion bars imported from Switzerland to the USA are now happening at a record pace. The amount of gold bullion bars imported from Switzerland to the USA in April of 2020 alone doubled this tall bar that you see here. Over 6 billion in gold bullion bars were shipped to the USA from Switzerland, and typical gold bullion importing nations like China, Hong Kong, and India are almost non-existent. Looking at the Comics Gold Warehouse data, it looks like the majority of this freshly imported Swiss gold bullion bar have funneled into the Brinks New York City Warehouse. See the recent increase of about 5 million ounces of gold at Brinks, New York City. That's about, well, just over 154 tons on this chart here. About the amount that we've imported from Switzerland in the month of March and the month of April combined. 
Let's see how long this gold remains in the COMEX fractional reserve system. The COMEX gold stopped contract delivery data is showing a record size of over 45,800 contracts, theoretically representing over 4.58 million ounces of potential gold deliverable. This is the largest volume of stopped contracts in over 15 years of time. Is it any wonder why record physical gold has been coming over to the USA from Switzerland? It appears we do have a COMEX emergency, one that can only be satisfied by record physical gold deliveries. How many high net worth investors are now bypassing the derivative complex and moving to the real things for the 2020s? We will see and keep update this data in the months to come. And that is all for this week. Take care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally, hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you think and which topics you want to hear more about.